Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on hemolytic anemia. Hemolysis is the premature breakdown of red blood cells before their normal lifespan, which is around 120 days. It can occur in the blood circulation, which is called as intravascular hemolysis, or it can also occur in the reticular endothelial system, for example, in macrophages of the liver, spleen, and bone marrow what we call as extravascular hemolysis. This hemolysis may be asymptomatic, but if the bone marrow does not compensate sufficiently, hemolytic anemia might occur. For the approach to hemolytic anemia, it's first to confirm the hemolysis and then to find the cause. So we try to answer these four questions. Where the first question is, is there increase in red cell breakdown? If there is, it may be evidenced by normal or high MCV, high bilirubin and urinary urobilinogen, and also high serum LDH. Second question is, or maybe is there increase in red cell production, where there is high reticulocytes causing high MCV. These reticulocytes are immature red blood cells. Third question, is the hemolysis mainly extravascular or intravascular? Because they are due to different causes. So if it is extravascular hemolysis, it may lead to splenic hypertrophy and splenomegaly, where we can do abdominal examination to find out whether there is a palpable enlarged spleen. Whereas the features of intravascular hemolysis are increase in free plasma hemoglobin released from the red blood cells, methemalbuminemia, reduce in plasma heptoglobin, hemoglobinuria, where there is red-brownish urine, or hemosiderin urea. The fourth question, why is there hemolysis? This is to find out the cause of the hemolysis. And let's let, take a look at the causes of hemolytic anemia. So the causes can be divided into hereditary or acquired causes, and it can also be divided into intracorpuscular or extracorpuscular defect. So for hereditary causes, there are hemoglobinopathies, including sickle cell disease and thalassemia, enzymopathies, which includes G6PD deficiency or pyruvate kinase deficiency, membrane defects, for example, hereditary spherocytosis or elliptocytosis, and also others like hereditary ovalocytosis or stomatocytosis, where the morphology of the cells are different. Other hereditary causes are, for example, familiar hemolytic uremic syndrome. Whereas for acquired causes, for intracorpuscular defect, there is a paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. And for extracorpuscular defect, there is microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, where there is mechanical damage to the red blood cells in the circulation, causing intravascular hemolysis and also formation of schist schistocytes. It can also be due to toxic agents or drugs. Infections such as malaria can exacerbate hemolysis and also autoimmune diseases such as autoimmune hemolytic anemia, short form AIHA. On examination, generally the patient might be jaundice or paler, a look pale. For abdomen, have to palpate for any hepatosplenomegaly and also look for leg ulcers. Investigation, we can do full blood count, reticulocyte count, bilirubin and LDH, heptoglobin and urinary urobilinogen. So if the patient has history of travelling, we have to take the tick and team films for malaria screening, especially if they travelled to a malaria endemic area. So peripheral blood film plays an important role in diagnosing the cause of the hemolytic anemia. We have to look at the morphology of the cells. So, for example, if hypochromic microcytic anemia, this can be detected in full blood count, it might suggest thalassemia. If there are sickle cells, it will suggest to sickle cell anemia. Schistocytes for microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, spherocytes for hereditary spherocytosis or even autoimmune hemolytic anemia, elliptocytes for hereditary elliptocytosis, and 
pains, bodies, and bite cells are typical findings in G6PD deficiency. If the cause is still not obvious after the peripheral blood film, we can do further investigations such as osmotic fragility testing, which will confirm whether there is any membrane abnormalities. Hemoglobin electrophoresis will detect any defect in the hemoglobin. Direct Combs test identifies the red cells coated with antibody or complement. And if there are presence of those antibodies, it will indicate an autoimmune cause. Enzyme assays are only done when all the other causes have been excluded. So this is all for this video. Thank you.